students i welcome all of you in the session of traffic engineering and management so you know that you have learnt module number 1 and module number 2 which were majorly had its focus towards introduction part and various kind of service now we have learnt in the first session that as a traffic engineer we must have to have certain knowledge about forecasting method because why we are learning this subject so the motive of learning this subject is to learn how to predict the future traffic and to establish certain measures in such a manner that the traffic which is going to raise in future can be incorporated it can be countered efficiently so as far as this subject is concerned what i would like to mention over here is out of nine modules your third mod third module stands for traffic forecasting and its methods so here from this session from today's session we will learn about the third module that is traffic forecasting so let us begin the journey of learning various kind of forecasting methods that how we can learn so this is the third module and as per our tradition let us learn its name sorry okay the name of the module is traffic forecasting so what we are going to cover in this session is we are going to cover that what is the actual need of traffic forecasting then what which are the various kind of traffics and what is the actual period of forecasting so this module has been divided into two to three sessions this module is quite Uh, small with respect to topics, but it is quite important as far as being a being an efficient traffic planner planner is concerned. Let us learn the first thing that is about the need of traffic forecasting. See, two segments are there. First stands for need, and the second stands for traffic forecasting. Now, up till now, we have learned that what is the meaning of traffic. now let us learn about certain glimpses of forecasting that forecasting means to predict means we'll try to forecast that which kind of traffic can be generated in the future so why it is required it is required for the for making the adequate investment in the transportation sector because until and unless we will have the actual number of traffic that is going to be generated in the future we will not be able to plan the measures to reduce that particular traffic for the future so this stands for the investment in the transportation sector now there is another need that is due to the scarcity of capital fund demand for proper planning and for both the present and future scenarios see we all know that as a developing country the budget allocation that is spared for transportation infrastructure is quite high in number but the available amount that is called as capital fund is quite less so technically that is called as the scarcity of the fund so this is the another need that the scarcity of fund capital fund demands the proper planning because if the fund is huge amount available then no planning is required but if the fund available which is it is in less in number then we will have to plan that okay out of the available money we will spend our money behind this resources so it requires proper planning and the proper planning requires adequate forecasting for both the present and future scenario then it is required for the accurate future estimate that will influence the engineering design of facilities now we have learned that what is facility design and it is also required for the economic decisions whether it should be funded or not because whenever we are discussing about creating or establishing any kind of facility it becomes necessary necessary for us to know that okay let us learn that there are total three facilities the demand for three facilities have been raised by the department now this is the government the government has the fund that can only satisfy two things out of these three things 
so the government need to have proper data that okay out of these three things one two and three let us say that the second number thing is not that much important as far as present scenario is concerned so this is how the fund can be allocated that fund will be allocated to a and c and it will be not it will not be allocated to b presently so it is required for taking the economic decisions that whether to fund or not now let us learn about the types of topic before that let us learn this once again that it is required for the investment scarcity and fund decision so you can remember this thing with the help of the shortcut key i s f i stands for investment s stands for scarcity f stands for fund allocation decisions got it okay let us learn about the various types of traffic see whenever we are dealing about the traffic forecasting it becomes necessary for us to know that which exactly kind of traffic do exist so the first is called as current traffic and second is called as traffic increase there are other things also this current traffic is majorly based or focused towards the existing and attracted or diverted traffic we will learn all this thing in detail see this current traffic represents the volume of traffic that would use the improved highway if it were open to traffic means this is the probable scenario that if the road or highway would be of improved capacity then the traffic would have used this particular road it consists of number of things such as existing traffic because it will be there and plus or minus existing traffic which is attracted means c this is the road x let us learn it by example this is the road x this is one of the road that is coming from this side and this is road that is going from this side so it can consider the existing traffic of this thing then the existing traffic which is attracted to this junction or it is diverted or diverted from diverted to or diverted from this junction when the improvements are completed so this is very complicated but easy see it is easy to understand existing plus or minus existing attracted or diverted that is lost from or other facilities then come the second thing that stands for traffic increase see there are various kind of growth such as normal growth of traffic the normal growth represents the increase in traffic on the existing facility if no improvement is made means currently if there is a section of road which has been built years before and there is no improvement on that road but currently it is accumulated with the existing traffic so it is called as normal growth of traffic and it is due to general increase in the number and usage of motor vehicles so it is very easy to understand normal growth means existing facility and no improvement and it is due to increase in number and usage so this is reason and this is concept then comes the another thing that is called as diverted traffic now as the name suggest diverted traffic represents the traffic which is diverted onto means onto or away from this two words you have to keep in mind onto and away from the route or mode which is being studied means if if, if this is the junction few vehicles can divert to this and few can divert from this to this so this is called as divert to this is called as diverted from so all this traffic will be considered then the traffic increase also stands for another kind of traffic that is called as induced traffic induced means generated or produced generated or 
produced traffic see it is written over here it represents the new traffic which is generated due to new travelers which is using the improved or new facility means induced stands for all kind of new thing induced means new traffic due to new travelers due to new facilities the first and second that we have learned is called as is sometimes it is also called as generated traffic then comes the last one that is development traffic which is being developed now this developed traffic what is what does it represent it represents the increase because it is development like this to this it is the like of graph so it is the increase in traffic due to improvement of the adjacent land or above the development which would have taken place had not the new or improved highway been constructed so if the road is there and this is the adjacent land if this adjacent land has been improved then the traffic will be increased due to usage of this particular facility see if this is the highway and this is the barren land then the traffic will be very less if mcdonalds or dominos kind of buildings are constructed over here then the traffic would be generated so it is like this development traffic then the thing that stands for this session's last thing that stands for period for traffic forecasting what period should be selected for traffic forecasting is the most important thing and confusion thing so let us learn that traffic forecasting is needed for transportation plans so it should be sufficient for traffic forecasting we all know that if we make any kind of long range plans then that will not be useful because you can see that there are various kind of development things are taking place smart cities are there iotization of the particular city is there then uh, intelligent transport is taking place so you cannot go for long range transportation plans they are not useful because they do not exist in other sectors this is the reason so in general the plans for the period about 10 to 5 years in detail additional 5 years means approximate 10 to 15 years plan should be prepared so the forecasting period which is which should be considered should be of 10 to 15 years in uk it is customary means it is usual to forecast the traffic for 15 years when it is about rural road building and in india the national highways are designed for 15 years after the completion of work fine this is the important thing completion of work so this was about today's session i hope you have understood the concept thoroughly thank you so much